Well, hey, Athens Church, my name is Courtney Lamb, and I get to serve the groups team here, specifically working with women's groups and college groups. And I've invited um, two of my friends here to have this conversation with us today. Um, their voices have been significant in my life and in my husband's life over the last 10, 20 years. Yeah, maybe for that. a while, yeah. We're not even that old. It's I know. That's we were real young. We were real young. We were like in preschool then. <laughs> um, but personally, they have impacted us both um, and professionally. And they have spent a lot of their adult life working with college students and investing in them. And so I um, can't wait for you to hear what they have to say. But we wanted to spend just a few minutes talking to you, specifically college students. One, because we love you. Um, we would all three just really love to be sitting at coffee with you versus doing this. Um, but since we can't, our hope is that God uses this conversation to encourage us and to encourage you. And we just wanted to say out loud that we know this season has been weird mm -hmm. and not what anybody signed up for and just wanted to acknowledge maybe feelings of loss and loneliness, loneliness that you're having. I know we're feeling that, but um, we think that you specifically – your kind of population might have had more loss and loneliness than we have as adults. And so there are just some things that we wanted to acknowledge that we know you've lost. Like if you're a freshman, man, this is not how you wanted to end the first semester of your freshman year. Any? Yeah. yeah. You, you, you missing time with your friends. Yes. Uh, just personal time with your friends, hanging out, doing intramural sports. Yeah. Man, it's so fun. It's fun. And they yeah. didn't get to do it. Yeah. And uh, they feel like they lost something there. Yeah. Um, Seniors. Oh, last semester in Athens. Last spring in <laughs> so Athens. That sad. makes me so sad. They both went to UGA. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Hey, lost, as crazy as this might sound, you actually lost going to class and walking across North Campus yes. or your campus in the spring mm -hmm. and maybe going down Millage mm -hmm. when it's uh, springtime and seeing the, the dogwoods and azaleas yeah. blooming. You, you just... You missed it, yeah. you know, and uh, it Bolton? might sound silly, but Bolton. Is yeah. it not a cafeteria? I, <laughs> didn't, I didn't go to UGA. I went to Sanford. We're a different kind of bulldog, but Bolton is a yes. eating. Yeah. G-Day game. Oh, man, spring G-Day. Game. Yeah, spring sports. Yeah. Some of our students, uh, you know, missed either participating as yeah. an athlete or uh, just going and, and hanging out with friends at sporting events. And, uh, you know, when you have it, you don't really think about losing it, but when yeah. you don't have it, it if it means something to you and you lose it, then there's a, a feeling that you have. Yeah, you don't yeah. always know how to articulate how you feel about it. Yeah, that's good. Well, the list is certainly a lot longer um, of things that you lost. Some of, some of it you may be saying, oh, it's not that big of a deal. And some of it may feel like a massive deal. Um, so that's why we're here today is just to talk about that, how to process it, what to do with it. And then the loneliness that comes with that. And we want you to know that you're not alone. Hopefully out of this conversation comes just some feelings of like, oh my gosh, somebody else is thinking mm -hmm. and feeling how I'm feeling. Um, but before we do that, KT, will you just tell us a little bit about who you are, mm -hmm. what you do professionally, mm -hmm. and then just how you've spent some years hanging out with collegiates? I will. Be glad to. Well, I love college students. Yeah. And as I look back on over 25 years of ministry, the majority of it has been training and equipping college students to do ministry primarily in the summer through a camp context of some sort. And I've just grown to really, really love that part of what I get to do. And I have a college student at my house yeah. who uh, wasn't planning on spending his spring yeah. with us, but he's there. And then I have a daughter who's headed to college in the fall. So, uh, man, college students have played a tremendous part of my own life. Yeah, awesome. Tara, what about you? Yeah, so I'm a wife, I'm a mom to three, one of which is a college student, and then I'm also a professional counselor here in Athens at Stress Care. So I work with a lot of college students. I would never want to say I have a favorite population, but I sure do love all my college students mm -hmm. who are clients. And just also, my husband and I were, have been in ministry for 20 years, and we serve for a, a lot of years with students. And so just, it's, um, they're my heartbeat. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't think I'm legally bound to say I don't have a favorite population. So college students, you are mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it. Um, but I, I wanted to ask y'all, first of all, um, 
to the college student who may be saying like, yes, I'm experiencing loss and loneliness, just in general, like, what would you say to them? Like, Tara, like as a counselor, as a mom of a college student, what would you say? Yeah, I think, I think the thing that we need to remember is that most of us don't necessarily learn how to deal with painful or conflictual emotions. And so we tend to kind of white knuckle our way through life, not like pushing them down, avoiding them, not admitting them, um, even to ourselves, much less other people. Um, And so I think just first step is just acknowledging and validating what you're feeling that it, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be long. It just is just acknowledge, validate what's coming up in you. I think that's just a first step. Yeah, that's good. You know, what yeah. about the um, underclassmen who may be saying like, I mean, I, it's not like I lost my graduation. Like it's, I'm just like a sophomore or junior. Like it's not that big of a deal. The things that I lost, what would you say to them? Yeah, I, I would say just if you're experiencing any kind of like, ugh, that's coming up in you, lean into that. Um, you don't have to be a senior in high school or a senior in college or a freshman in college to have experienced some kind of loss. I know that um, a lot of um, other college students have said that they just honestly moving homes, even to great families, moving home has been really hard. That's a loss. You're moving home. You've lost a little bit of that independence that you've worked so hard to gain in your college years. Um, Even freshmen who just got here are struggling being at home because honestly, navigating adult relationships with your parents could be a whole other conversation we could have, you know, with parents and, and college students. Yeah, that's good. You know, one of the things I've seen uh, college students have, I've seen us really struggle with over the, over these years when they feel like they lose something is they've heard all their life to be strong. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, you got to be strong. You're going off to college and you're, you're starting a new chapter of your life. And so you need to be strong. And you even read in scriptures, just be strong and courageous. Yeah. And yeah. in this particular situation, when you're dealing with loss, whatever that loss might be, mm-hmm. it's understanding what strong really looks like. And in this case, strong is, is admitting, hey, I, I've lost something here and I, I'm struggling with it. And sometimes that can be viewed as a weakness or, hey, I'm ashamed of this fact that I'm and I don't know how to deal with this emotion, maybe for the first time. But in this case, as I understand it, it's let's be the, the strongest thing you can do is to talk with someone, somebody, acknowledge that, say it. Say it out loud. Yeah. Write it down in a journal. That's good. Uh, you know, yeah. Pray about it. You know, um, I, I think about the words that uh, God said to Joshua as he was taking the mantle from Moses, mm-hmm. and he said very clearly, "He said, just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Yeah. I will never forsake or leave you." And in these moments where we are really kind of sh- shook a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, we have to remember that. And uh, But being strong doesn't mean trying to white knuckle it yeah. and just get, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to man up or str- get strong enough. It's really just admitting, hey, I need, I need some help here. Yeah. I'm dealing with some loss that I don't really know how to process. One of my favorite scriptures and one that has brought me so much freedom, particularly in the last 10 years, has been just the story of Hagar in Genesis 16 mm-hmm. and how she was in such distress. Mm-hmm. And she she ran um, into the desert and Jesus met her there. And um, and she, you know, he knew everything about her. He knew everything about her situation. And he allowed her to face what she was dealing with. And she named him the God who sees me the God who sees. And it's one of my very favorite, like we're not alone. He's with us. um, And he strengthens us for whatever journey we're on. You know, he meets us where we're at. That's good. I think um, when I was in college is when I actually began to understand that story and that name of God, uh, he gives himself lots of names, Mm -hmm. um, not just God. And and that name is, it's two, two little L E L R L Roy. R-O-I, and it's the God who sees. And I, much of my 20s, I know I felt like, it feels like God's like seeing everybody else, but I don't mm-hmm. feel him seeing me. And I learned that name um, from my college pastor, Becca. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that's a char- the God who sees, that's a characteristic that he's giving himself. And he sees me right where I'm mm-hmm. at in my mess, not when I'm overperforming and, and strong, um, but in my weakness. And so we think that that's true of you, that he's the God who sees you right in the middle of this weird, messy spot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, okay, so we've, we're saying basically out loud, like, hey, just acknowledge that. Like, say out loud the things that you feel. Say it to a friend. Write it down. I love that suggestion. If you're like, I don't have anybody to, like, say it out loud, like, write it down. When would y'all both say it's kind of like, maybe, like, include the professional. You are a professional counselor. You work with students all the time. When would you start saying, like, hey, I, I would maybe, like, reach out to somebody? Well, uh what I would suggest is when you realize that it's just, it's not going away. That's good. Then, you know, there's nothing wrong with just saying, hey, I, I want to talk with somebody. And probably the healthiest thing you can do is to do it as fast as you can. If you're really even having some of those thoughts, then saying, hey, I wonder if I should, that probably means you should. <laughs> and uh, I know there's resources right here at Athens Church to help you get connected as a college student to a trained professional who can just help you walk through it. And there's no shame in that. That's the, that's the beauty of it. There's people who care and love you and want to walk you through this season. And so I would say if you're even thinking about it, it'd be just better just to reach out and, and talk with somebody about it who's trained to walk you through it. Yeah. I think just remembering first that emotions aren't bad. God gave them to us. And ultimately what we're feeling and thinking kind of, they point us to what we need. You know what I'm saying? They kind of reveal what we need. And so then just inviting God into that, um, knowing when to reach out for help. I, for me, it's when you're either over-functioning or under-functioning, okay. which looks a lot like anxiety or depression. Okay. You know, under Anxiety being over-functioning. Over-functioning, under-functioning being um, depression. And so when you feel like, like you said, when it's not going away, when it's it's ruminating and it's all you can think about most days, it's time to either reach out to a mentor, reach out to a friend, reach out to your parent if you have that kind of relationship, um, reach out to a therapist. You know, there are lots of good ones who will yeah. help navigate it with you. That's good. Yeah. Um, we just kind of addressed some like next steps of like, okay, I'm going to identify, I'm a little bit lonely in this season. I, I, I'm not supposed to be here till summer. I'm supposed to have this summer job. I know you yeah. work with students who maybe lost that yeah. uh, this summer. Yeah. Um, what would you say to them for one? And then both of y'all, if you could speak to like, other than what we just said, are there any other next steps of like, okay, I, I have lost something and what I feel is valid. Um, anything else? What now? Yeah, I, you know, yes, I do work with a lot of college students who are getting ready for, to, in our case, to do summer camp. Yeah. And uh, having talked with some of them as their summers have changed, they, they do feel a sense of loss. And But maybe you were getting ready to go do a mission trip. Yeah. Maybe you were going to do something in your home church or, or an internship in, in your hometown at an accounting firm and all that's changed or whatever the case may be. Uh, for me, I would I would say go back to your life mission statement. And if you don't have one, if you have a little spare time, mm -hmm. now's a good time to start working on one. Uh, but go back and, and look at what you believe God's created you to do right now as a college student. That's good. And, and go back to that. And you might say, well, I felt like God was calling me to do this this summer. But if you look at it in the scope of your life mission, you'll see this as really a a temporary interruption, if you will, and not a permanent interruption. Mm -hmm. If you see it as a permanent in, in, uh, interruption, I think it could be just devastating yeah. to you, your long-range plans. But I would say go back, use this time to really hone in on your life mission. Say, what did God create you to do? And how can this play into that future direction mm -hmm. um, as you think forward rather than thinking backwards? Rather than laser focus on what I lost. Right. How can yeah. God use this? This is not fun. This is, nobody uh, asked to go through this. Yeah. <laughs> but certainly God can redeem it yeah. and use it for your future purpose in life. And so if you can view it through that, as you work through this season of loss, I think, um, I think it can really help process you and move you forward uh, in thinking of what, what you can do to, yeah. to continue on that life mission. That's really good. I think, paying attention to like, man, why did I like want to do that camp or that internship or whatever? I, I just want to say that that desire in you and that passion in you, God's not going to waste that. Like mm -hmm. if you put that in you, 
that's there permanently, you know, yeah. and I know we can all speak to, there's been seasons where God has pressed pause on a thing and you're just kind of going like, ah, like, but God gave me this thing and I don't know how to exercise it. And for me in those seasons is when he roots stuff out that doesn't need to be attached to that thing, but it also just deepens like, I'm, I gave you that and that's part of how I created you. And I will let you use that because if it's for his glory, yeah. you know, um, he wants us to, to use those gifts and passions and talents. So what about you, Tara? Yeah, I think seasons like this do, like you said, it unearths what's already there, you know, kind of below the surface. And so just allowing that process to happen, acknowledge it, validate it, lean into it with God, invite God into it. Um, but also just recognize kind of the positive spin on it, that internal conflict really is growth trying to happen. It's trying to come out. Yeah. And so just letting that process happen. Something I say a lot to um to my clients is just that opposing emotions can live together, that you can feel the good with gratitude list. I know I make a gratitude list every day in my journal. It's just one or two things that just made the day better. Um, gratitude turns things around a lot of times. So feeling the good, but also holding the hard, acknowledging the hard and just letting opposing emotions live together. They can. Um, but I also think just the, the most important thing, inviting God into it with you, that knowing that he's with you, his nearness brings the relief that you need. That's good. Yeah. it's really good. All right. Before we let them go, is there anything else that you're like, you want to say to the college student that's, that's watching this? I would just, just remind you that, man, it, in this season of loss, that God can and will redeem this for his glory and that that might sound kind of churchy yeah. to think about and in the moment when you're going through it you just never know how God will use this season but I have a I have a sneaky suspicion that God's up to something and if we're open to what he's doing in our life even in the season we didn't want to be in uh, there's going to be something that he has for us on the other side that we would have never experienced had we not gone through what we've done. And you can look through scripture and see that happen, mm -hmm. play, play out one, you know, one time after another, that God's uh, had something in mind that was far greater than what we could experience. And maybe if you feel like you're losing something and you, you probably are feeling that way, that you've lost something, there's hope that we can hold on to, that there is something on the other side of this once we get through it. Uh, that's going to be even greater than we could uh, imagine. And that gives me hope because yeah. all of our plans have changed. Uh, and, you know, we were planning to do a big summer camp, but that's not going to happen yeah. <laughs> the way we had planned. But, uh, but God's got something else in store. And for college students, I know that he's got something in store for you on the other side of this time of loss. That's good. Yeah, and I would just say, honestly, I, it's, it's, this, it's more of that. Just my own story has been understanding that God is with me, that he sees me, and that um, that everything, he uses everything to bring us into just a, a closer, deeper, richer walk with him. And so even the hardest parts of this process, he'll use to um, just draw you into a deeper place with him. So just let that process happen. That's good. Um, Y'all, thank you so much. I hope college students that you get to bump into these two in Athens, whether that be in her office um, or here at church or maybe on one of your teams mm -hmm. during yeah. the summer um, or over coffee. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I hope you get to sit down with them or that I get to sit down with you. I'd love that as well. But um, we want you to know as well that if you are feeling lonely right now, we can help connect you with some other college students. We're doing our best to be creative and we've done some virtual groups over the last few weeks. I know everybody's over Zoom, but it is better than nothing. And so you can email us at groups at Athens Church, and I would love to get you to connect it to some other collegiates. Um, or we can go ahead and put you on the list for fall. Hopefully we get to do groups in person then, but you do not have to do this alone. And we hope that you mm -hmm. see that um, after this conversation. Um, we see you, God sees you, and we're cheering you on. And we trust that God has good things for you in this um, and that he will take all of our losses yeah. um, he will redeem them and he will bring good out of them because that's what he says in the scripture that he has plans um, that are good that he has hope for our future that's in Jeremiah so we love you and we cannot wait to see you right back here um, in Athens hopefully soon <laughs>